Hello everyone, welcome to day 29th of April Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. My name is Sanjay Radeja, I am working as a software developer for at Adobe and today I present day 670 of daily lead code problem. The question that we have in today is, is graph by pirate? Here in this question we are given an undirected graph of n nodes. What we need to do, we need to identify whether the graph is by pirate in nature or not. If it is, then we need to return true, otherwise we need to return false. A graph is said to be by pirate if nodes can be partitioned into two independent sets A and B. So this is very important that you have to segregate the nodes into two independent set A and B such that every edge in the graph connects a node in set A and a node in set B. So go through this definition very carefully. We'll be using this definition in our algorithm by the presentation. So let's quickly hop on to it. Also, I have already solved this question in the past as well. However, there is some background noise which will which makes the algorithm difficult to understand. For better clarity, I am redoing and rebuilding this video today. So without further ado, let's quickly hop on to the PPT where I'll explain these example as well as the algorithm to go about it. Lead code 785 is graph by pirate. It's a medium level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. Also, in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to ping on the Telegram group or the Discord server of Coding Decoded. Both the links are mentioned in the description below. Without further ado, let's walk through a different examples so that we get a good hold of the concept. Let's assume we are given a graph in this form. 0 is connected with 1, 1 is connected with 3, 3 is connected with 2 and 2 is connected with 0. Uh, let's ask ourselves whether this division is possible where 2 independent sets can be created such that every node in set A is connected with every node in set B. So the answer here is yes. You can see that 0 and 3 can form one particular group highlighted with red and 2 and 1 can form another group highlighted in green. Also you will observe that every node in set A which is red set is connected with every node in set B. So 0 is connected with 1, 0 is connected with 2. Similarly, 3 is connected with 1, 3 is also connected with 2. That means this segregation is possible. So let's take the same example that we just discussed. It's a happy case for us. 0 is connected with 1, 1 is connected with 3, 3 is connected with 2, 2 is connected with 0 again. And each node can have three possible states. The first one is minus 1, which signifies this is a default state. All the nodes in this state turns out to be blue in nature and that simply signifies that the node has not been marked or visited in the past. It's a fresh case followed by zero. So zero means uh, the node will be marked red in nature followed by green. Green is signified by a value one and uh, whenever you see that the node have been marked one that simply means that it is colored green. Similarly zero means red. So let's start the iteration. I have created uh, uh, an array that signifies the coloring state of each node and by default it is initialized to blue. Uh, and let's start the iteration. So let's shoot for it. The first node that we see happens to be 0. 0 is connected with 1 and 2. We are already aware of it. So in the adjacency matrix we will have something like this. 0 is connected with 1 and 2. And what is the current state of 0? The current state of 0 happens to be minus 1. And whenever you see minus 1, what you are, what you are going to do? You are going to color this node green in nature. So let me just change the color of pen and let's just update the color of this particular node to green. So this gets updated to 1. And now what we are going to do, let's start the BFS traversal, DFS traversal on this particular node. When we are doing DFS traversal, what we, what we will look out for, we look out for all its neighboring nodes. So what are those neighboring nodes? The neighboring node is 1 and 2. So Let's start the iteration and let's start coloring them up. Uh, we, have we are performing DFS on 0. And the current color of uh, 0 is green in nature. The first node that we witness in DFS of 0 is 1. So what is the current state of 1? The current state of 1 is also minus 1 in nature. That means the node has not yet been visited in the past. So what we are going to do, we'll simply color this node complementary to the node to the color of the parent node. What was the color of the parent node? The color of the parent node was green. So that, that means we are going to no color this node up with red because we are interested in forming uh, two disjoint sets. So this gets updated to a green, a red and the value will be updated to zero. So this gets updated to zero. 
going ahead will follow the same process now it's time to invoke dfs of 1 also remember that the dfs of 0 is still not complete uh, we haven't visited the second node yet we are just moving in a dfs fashion so let's continue the process and 1 is connected with 3 so obviously we are gonna move towards 3 and uh, let's uh, check what is the state of 3 the state of 3 happens to be minus 1 in nature since it's minus 1 in nature that simply means that we can color this up and to what value are we gonna color this up we will use complementary of the parent node so what is the color of the parent node the color of the parent node happens to be red in nature that means we are gonna color this up green in nature because that's complementary of red so this gets updated to green and the value here gets updated to 1 let's continue the process this time we are gonna invoke DFS on 3 3 is connected with two nodes the first one is 1 and the second one is 2 so what we are gonna check we'll iterate over both these nodes one by one so what is the uh, first node first node connected with 3 happens to be 1 in nature and uh, since it's 1 in nature we will check what is the current state what is the current state of 1 the current state of 1 happens to be 0 that means it has been marked red which is complementary to 3 that that makes it a happy case uh, there is no contradictions contradictory statements over here let's proceed ahead next we see is 2 at 2 what do we see we see that the node has not yet been marked anything it's in default state which is blue so what we are going to do we'll mark it to the color complementary of the parent node what is the parent node over here it is 3 here uh, it is uh, green here so the color that we are going to go for at 2 happens to be red so let's go ahead and mark this red in nature so what do you see after the entire iteration once all the dfs traversals are done you will see that all the nodes have been colored either red or green and uh, the parent is always complementary to its children as a result of which it's a happy case now let's talk about an interesting case which is a negative case through which you will get a better understanding of this algo so let's shoot for it here the graph has been updated there is another connection between 0 and 3 so let's start the iteration at 0 what color do we see we see the color happens to be minus 1 which means it has not been visited in the past or it's still in the default state what we are gonna do we'll simply color this node up with green in nature and uh, once we color this node green in nature what we will do we'll perform the DFS operation on this particular node so let's shoot for performing the dfs operation on this particular node and by virtue of this all the child nodes should be marked red in nature all its neighboring nodes should be marked red in nature so one should be marked red two should be marked red three should be marked red so let's go ahead and do that let's go one by one the first in the first go let's shoot for updating the color of one so one gets updated to red because the current state of one was minus one that was unvisited and let's update it to zero and let's continue the operation and at one what we are going to do we'll perform the dfs of one uh, as a result of which we'll move towards its neighboring nodes and what are its neighboring nodes the first one is zero and the next one is three that simply means that zero and three should be marked green in nature so the color of these two nodes should be green so let's do that and let's visit the third node at 3 what do we see we see that the color is still unvisited it's in the default state so let's update it to green and it gets updated to green and let's continue the iteration uh, what do we see next uh, we will we are going to perform the dfs on uh, uh, third node so when we perform dfs on third node what do we see we see that it it has connections with 1 0 and 2 since it has connections with 1 0 and 2 uh, all these three nodes should be marked red in nature however there is a catch one has been appropriately marked red however zero is marked already as green which is contradiction to the expectation of this particular dfs traversal as per the dfs traversal of this particular node its complementary or neighboring node should be marked complementary of the current color this should be marked as red however this is already marked green as a result of which we can say that the graph is not bipirate you cannot divide this graph into two independent sets as asked in the question as a result of which we have to return false 
I hope you have understood this logic. Why I am saying this? Because when you perform the DFS traversal on three, you will see that it has three nodes in connection, which is zero, one, and two. One has already been marked appropriately as red. Zero, to the to our surprise, is already marked green in nature. Since it's already marked green in nature, this is a contradiction for the DFS traversal of three. You have to break this up. So this is a crux of the problem identifying the breakage condition to conclude it further let's quickly walk through the coding section and i'll code live for you guys let me define the color array as told and this will store what colors are assigned to each node in the graph and what would be the length of this color array it would be graph dot length and let's fill this array with minus one color that stands for blue as in our case as explained in the algorithm let's start the iteration i is equal to zero i is less than len i plus plus and uh, if the color of i happens to be minus one that means it is uncolored i'll color this node with one that means green and i'll start the dfs reversal dfs reversal and from which node i'll start i'll start from i i'll pass in the graph and i'll pass in color also this dfs reversal will return a boolean variable that means all its children node are whether uh, there is a cycle kind of a thing in the children node or not if that happens that means it's not a by pirate and it will return false from it otherwise will return true let's try and write the private method for checking whether it's possible to color all its uh, inner nodes or not integer index And let's store what is the current color current color current color of the node is color dot index and let's iterate over all its children node connection index graph dot okay of that graph of at that particular index and if color of connection node actually it should be connecting node connecting index equals equals to the current color for any case if that happens will return false otherwise if equals equals to minus one that means it's uncolored i'll perform the dfs starting from connecting nodes and i'll pass in graph and i'll pass in color if this returns false if I'm unable to color these nodes internally, then I'll return false. Also, before uh, invoking uh, the uh, the DFS on its children node, I'll update the color to one minus current color. So this part is important. Otherwise, you could have written if current color equals equals to if current color equals equals to one then if if current color equals equals to one then connecting color would become zero that means if it's green 
uh, that then it would become the connection color should be zero otherwise if connecting current color is zero the connect the color of the connecting index is one so instead of writing these four statements i have reduced it to a single statement one minus current color i can just uh, go uh, trim this up and for now and i'll return true for a happy case so what we are doing is whether it is not possible to make it by pirate not whether it is it possible to make it by pirate accepted uh, what is the time complexity of this approach? The time complexity is order of n square, the typical graph traversal complexity. And space complexity is order of n, the number of, uh, n stands for the number of nodes, as we are using a colored array. Uh, thanks for watching the video, hope you enjoyed it.